Four months after I took my first lesson, her manager said, would you like to go on tour with the company? And I said, as what? I thought he meant like assistant stage manager. And he said, dancing. I said, I'll quit college tomorrow. went on that first tour with Martha, not thinking I would stay, but I somehow never got away. Dancing was very exciting, so it was an adventure, and that's why I stuck with it. as a liberal education. And I think, given the time, I could do it. You become a better dancer, not just as you gain technique, but as you gain some idea of why you're dancing. First, you don't need an idea. You just need to do it. But then, everything you know, every sight you see, every different kind of person and experience you have contributes to what you are on stage. And you don't become a mechanical dancer. You become a communicator. small favor. Hold this event on Wednesday. <laughs> because it's my 95th birthday. same loft building where I lived and his name was Paul Maddock. He's on the internet. I mean you can look him up on the that thing they have where you know. <laughs> and he was an ardent, he'd come from Germany. He was an ardent anti-Nazi and he was lucky to escape with his wife and his baby. And he's also a political theorist. We were talking one day and I said, well, I'm off to work. He said, you don't work, you dance. <laughs> He said, dancing is work. He said, no, it's not work, it's effort. Work is effort that leads to a product. You produce nothing. <laughs> he said, I produce dancing. He says, put it here. I said, there are many things you can produce, but you can't hold in your hand. He said, such as, I said, love. So he sort of paused and he said, well, I don't need dance which revealed a flaw in his reasoning. <laughs> to call it the automatic work was only effort that produced a product that he personally needed. I need dance and I would assume everyone in this room needs it too. I need it for a lot of reasons, but the first one, or the one that comes to me, or came to me when I was writing this was magic time. How many of you have heard that expression? You might have heard magic time. You might have heard it. Well, when you go on stage, I mean, even the most tired old Broadway show, we were sitting there, our number was approaching, and the dance captain would say, Get up, kids, it's magic time. And you would go on stage, and on stage, the way the magic happened, something happened and we became 
something else. We danced. I can't, I can't still tell where that energy came from, but it's magic, so it's magic time. <laughs> magic is an intensification of life. A moment when you are completely absorbed in what you're doing. I believe that animals, cats, dogs, butterflies, <coughs> live their whole lives in magic time. Dance is not the only way you can experience magic time. I experienced it competing and, and training and swimming in high school, playing and listening to music, and I didn't bring it with me, but I had a class in Forge in high school, and um, Brooklyn Tech, by the way. Yeah. And uh, I made a gate hook. You know how they are? And I made this out of a hunk of metal, just a little hunk of metal, a hammer, a hot fire, and an anvil. And making, I still have it. Why I didn't bring it with me, I don't know. It's probably something. But it doesn't matter. You can imagine a gate hook. It's a crude gate hook, but I got a B in it. I did not get it in it. <laughs> but it was, it was marvelous to make it. So people who make things experience magic time, too. I experienced magic time when I first flew an airplane by myself. That was in the Army. And after that, it would come and go. You don't always experience magic time. I cannot remember dancing without it happening. But um, flying, it does happen often enough to make people want to be pilots. I wanted to dance more. Um, dancing is like flying, except you do not need an aeroplane. <laughs> stand here after getting an award for having had the luck to have lived my life in dance. The last person to put me to work and actually pay me to be a dancer was Naomi. The first person who ever put me to work and paid me to be a dancer was Martha Graham. Martha Graham was a trip. <laughs> yeah, I didn't write this down, I don't want to go over my four minutes. But I remember I was in the company about a month and a half, and she was on one side of this huge room that they gave us to warm up in, and I was on the other. And she caught my eye, which was like, you can come over and talk to me. And I went over and said to her, Martha, I've realized something. She said, what's that? I said, you're not a saint. <laughs> And she said, congratulations. <laughs> I, I, I've written a whole book about her. I've been writing this book for about 40 years. It's going to come out in April. <laughs> the title is On Stage with Martha Graham. And I hope you'll look it up. It's even going to be on Amazon, for God's sake. <laughs> I want to express my deep gratitude to the Martha Hill Fund and all its board of directors everybody associated with it for this unexpected but very welcome honor.